I liken it to, it's like the cricket of board games. Like, it's been explained to me several times. That's a great analogy. And I yeah. Still don't the understand. Cricket of board games. I love that. I have not heard that before. It's because cricket yeah, doesn't make any sense. You play sense. it for four days. <laughs> Most people are just there to drink beer. And if you don't know what's going on, you think just people are making up rules as you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's the right way to describe that card game. All right, that's all you get. Come on, Argus. Ah. <laughs> I'm very glad I brought that crib board. It's getting a lot of use. I'm not okay. going to leave it behind, though. The crib board? So That's your crib board? I'm amazed at how many oh. people are getting so into it. Jess will be like, I'm off to play some cribbage. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, the new watch is coming in. I was going to say, I can see that. And I'm <laughs> further away. Oh, sorry, Antonella. <laughs> Calling you short. <laughs> I just have a really long torso. That's what it is. Yeah, me too. Short little legs and torso. <laughs> We're almost there. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, well, maybe you can uh, pick out the rock. Yeah. Okay, Get in there. Oh my gosh, five meters. This is cruel. <laughs> no, there's no chance. But there's some, like, nice Two ones here. Two meter delta. Like, I'm coming up. There's some nice ones. Oh, we're not there yet. Hard to <laughs> Does it have to be exact? No. I mean, yes, them, it's them the rules. Them yeah, rules. we can grab it now. I feel like this is a good place Should to I grab. Did I hear we can grab it now? Yeah, we can grab it now. Yes! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you see how fast he grabbed it? Oh, are you kidding me? We're grabbing right. it right Which now. One? <laughs> oh, now I'm in a weird place. Bonk. Bonk. All right, oh. I'm ready for action. So okay. <laughs> start poking rocks. Yeah, let's just start poking them and see which one is the most grabby. How about this one? Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that was so easy. You know, five meters from now, it won't be easy, so. Yeah, absolutely not. We are time efficient. Anyone? Sample salvo, please. That's Box crazy. out. Okay. Let's put it in starboard C. Uh, Charlie? Yes, Charlie. Kay. I'll be fine with just the one camera. <laughs> okay. All right. my real okay. What's our sample number on that one? That was zero three eight. Zero three eight. Yay! My relief had come. I'd right, unplugged my, my headset, Done. and you guys got a rock sample after all. Okay. Yeah. Can we get our Niskin now? Seen. When did we start that sample? Niskin. Oh, I didn't see. When did oh, we Niskin. Start it? Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do four? Yep. Whoopsies. I'm gonna retract this. Uh, what are we doing this button here? Four. I don't want this here. Oops. You can put it in autos too, Antonella. Yeah. Bump down on the camera, please. Mm -hmm. Or looks like orange. Got it. Got it. Oh, no. <laughs> Stop. 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 <laughs> Here we go. All right, I should probably get a double-digit delta here. 
<laughs> act like we've been responsible citizens the whole time. Yeah. Everything's great. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. That sample was 039. Uh, so Niskin 039, ROG 038, yeah? Yep. Cool. And you said we couldn't do it. I knew we could. I said we wouldn't get to 2570. Okay, we true. were so close. We were really close. We were pretty so. close. Closer than the last watch on their rock sample. So oh, we didn't okay. stop and look at the rock before you put it in. <laughs> You're right, I was going for speed. <laughs> yeah, that, it, was, it, was, it was all speed. With our mission accomplished, we are now going to switch watches. So it will be a little quiet while we do the switchover. Check on two, Dave, in video. Got you there, Jake. You got us? Check, check. Mm, we're on SPL now. That's how we're doing. <laughs> got the snacks today. Oh, snacks galore. Wow. I mean, uh,
All right, Adam, I know you popped up here, but I'll just zoom out a couple of clicks on the on the map to see our progress here. Looks like we're between waypoint five and waypoint six headed upslope. Yeah, if you uh, zoom out, I think it looked like we were about halfway up the slope from where we first started. Sure, let me check that out. Maybe we, a little more because we did that little jog to the, the right. Yeah, yeah, the, so. Three and a half kilometers covered, and uh, the top, the summit is about two and a half away. Perfect. Then we have those downslope, or there's a second summit on the saddle. Yeah. That's a bit farther than that. I'm guessing that's a that's a bonus. That's yeah. That's a bonus. And probably we would just uh, tow over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, we would like to pause here. Or do you want to um, continue towards waypoint six? Let's keep moving. Okay. We'll just go. Do you want to go to six? Or do you want to go straight to seven? Let's go to six. Like that. Yeah. Upslope like that. One seven zero will be the bearing. Roger one seven zero. One seven zero. Bridge nav. Good evening. Uh, could we have a step one hundred meters bearing one seven zero speed zero point two? Thank you. Good evening. We have a new ship that has joined you, viewers. Thanks for watching. This is the 8 to 12 shift. Unofficial name, Cucumber Hunters. <laughs> do we want to keep that name? Since I don't know. That's depth dependent name, I think. <laughs> what is our depth right now? We're 2,500. 2,564. Okay, let's see what our USPL is set to. Two seconds. Mm. My name is Lisa. I'm the Science Communication Fellow for this shift. I am joining you here from the ocean, but my home is in Kansas. My first time out in the open ocean. Enjoying every minute of it. Feel yeah, free you, had, you had said that you were, um, you spent a few days on a ship before? I did. I was on a cruise ship. I don't even know if that counts. <laughs> no, it counts. Okay. It's probably a lot more stable than this. Oh, thing. my, yes. <laughs> I had no idea. Three days in the Galapagos. That's, that's it for oh, me. Nice. Yeah. It was amazing, but... Free to send your questions into the chat. Are ready to go. Did the last uh, watch pass off anything about how the um, how the life has been? at the seafloor here? Have they been seeing a lot? So they said they've been, actually they kind of told me about the geology. Mm. They uh, knew their audience. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but as I've checked in, I think we've kind of seen sparse biology. We haven't seen the the large, uh, you know, fan bamboo corals. I probably just put two corals together, which it's some sort of hybrid. But <laughs> the big ones that we saw in the last dive, I don't think they've seen much of that. More like these small branching ones. Yeah. Hmm. 
Adam, a viewer would like to know what, if you can describe what we're seeing right now in terms of the geology. Yeah, so we're halfway up the slope of uh, unnamed seamount, and we're looking at what looks like uh, a slope of broken pieces of lava that have subsequently been covered uh, with this iron manganese crust. And the thickness of it is you know, probably on the order of centimeters, and it welds together the rock fragments and coats the the big pieces. Um, basaltic eruptions in, in the ocean like this typically produce pillow lavas, so those are meter-sized bulbs of, of lava with crust on the outside, and as they break apart and tumble down the slope, you oftentimes see kind of puzzle pieces of these uh, balls of lava that you kind of fit back together, and you can see hints of that in what we're looking at, but uh, everything has been smoothed over by the accretion of this iron manganese crust. Now realizing they probably didn't want that detailed of a description. <laughs> <laughs> are there areas of the, <clears throat> let's say, are there areas of the seafloor that are as old as this one that are not covered in that manganese crust? Or is that kind of a ubiquitous, like, you know, if you're there there for that long, you'll eventually develop that, that crust over? No, there, yeah, there are areas that are this old that are not, uh, not coated. Mm. Although, you know, the Pacific has some of the oldest oceanic crust on, on the planet, right? Because it, the spreading centers are way over on the in the eastern Pacific, mm -hmm. and uh, in the western Pacific, that's a really old crust, super dense. It's mm -hmm. one of the reasons you get really deep trenches like the Marianas Trench. Uh, it's because the crust is so dense it dives really steeply down into the mantle. Mm. So just the, the weight of it? The, the, yeah, I mean the density of it mm. relative to the mantle that it's the sinking the into. Yeah. quicker, mm. yeah. creating a steeper angle, creating a deeper trench. Mm. Throughout geologic time, have we gotten manganese crust like this? Or is it after the oxidation events or after iron can precipitate out? You know anything about that? Yeah, I don't know about manganese deposits in the rock record, um, but I would assume that there's some, especially in, in uh, older ophiolites. Definitely. Yeah, I don't recall from like exposed paleo pillow deposits that they have manganese crust. Yeah, probably like thin manganese crust probably exists on those deposits, but I never paid too much attention to that. Not a paleo guy. We have a viewer who's asking how long this dive is slated for, and it's estimated to be about 24 hour dive. Launched at about 5 a.m. our time today. We have a note from the, the, a scientist ashore reference to the what the bio biology has been like he said it's been fairly sparse mm. Mm. but you know I think on the last dive stuff started to pick up after 2500 meters so yeah it seems to be about the threshold hopefully we'll get some ridges and with current Yes, one of our viewers has noted that we are wearing masks, and that is part of our COVID protocol. We all were tested before coming aboard the ship, and then tested again, and we're masking, and we'll test again. Be safe. And at some point after you know, the presumed incubation period for 
COVID, we'll be able to take the masks off. Because Correct. Seven days of mask wearing, and we'll test again. And hopefully be mask free. If I remember from the last dive, when we started to see a whole lot of uh, uh, sponge stalks, mm -hmm. that was kind of like the foreshadowing of yeah, some denser biology. Came from above. Although I just saw a, a holdfast that was pretty large stuck on a rock. Maybe they were in situ here. Perhaps conditions were more favorable at another time. Does anyone else find that word hold fast to be super evocative and nice? <laughs> 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 Never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> now I do. <laughs> It's only 12 minutes into the watch, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, hype trains left the station. Hype trains. Are we driving hype train? Or are you driving hype train? Or is it, uh, what was the other train? Practicality train. Practicality train. Practicality. <laughs> That's slope dependent. <laughs> <laughs> Can we look at that coral on the right and see if it's supposed to be like that or if it's like predated on the pronged one yeah yeah Reg. Well, there's a, under the rocks here there's a bathy pathies over there too All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. Looks like it just has small Oh, the polyps, polyps are facing down. That means something. Let's, let me check my notes. Oh. Is that a primnoid? Three more the... weeks of winter. Norella. <laughs> a, a primnoid? A norella primnoid? I don't know about primnoid, but I, I know I think it's a norella. Is, a is the primnoid? Okay. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm just. Sorry, guys. Could be way wrong. That's the directionality of the when the closed polyps with the sclerites. Correct. Orient. Yeah. There's something on it too, a little worm or something. Yeah. Yeah. Can we look at the um? Whatever's underneath the rock, too. Yeah, it looked like a, one of the Looking down? white, spiky sea cucumbers. Sorry, what did you say, Jess? Yeah, you want to come a little wide there, please, Dave? Go ahead and push on in there, please. Is it a cucumber? Yeah. Or a worm? I think it's a holotherian. Yep. Yeah. Cool spikes. Yeah, that one is really cool. Oh, I just remembered that freaky polychaete. <laughs> <laughs> that was like generally frightening to me because I thought it was something else. All right, full weather, please, Dave. What did you think it was? There any a sponge, right? I just thought it was a sponge, and then I was like, oh, maybe it's a holotherian, and then it just started to like react in a weird way, <laughs> move around funny. Scientists ashore, a comment on the term holdfast reminds him of the movie Master and Commander, hmm. Hmm. where they are trepanning a man and holdfast is tattooed on his knuckles. 
Interesting. What is trepanning? I don't know. Oh, not bad. It's dead anyway. <laughs> dead anyway. <laughs> it's going to be more dead. Should we do some interjections? Yeah, sure. let's do it. Start with the front row. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Dave. <laughs> okay, I'll lead off. <laughs> what the heck? That was Dave. Reverse order. <laughs> All right. Dave Robertson, uh, lead video engineer for this expedition and uh, sitting in the video operator seat today. That's it. <laughs> Jake Bonney, sitting in the Argus seat for today. Um, I am also a student at the University of Rhode Island and uh, studying ocean engineering. You finished. I as finished. A I finished there. as of a few a few weeks ago. Yes. <laughs> Congrats. He's a master now. You're a master. Yes. Um, I'm Jess Sandoval. I'm Lanherk and um, just finished my doctorate. Dr. Jess. Woo! Congrats. Jay. Yeah. Renato Kane, navigation and mapping. I finished a master's an amount of years ago that I'm now uncomfortable speaking about. <laughs> <laughs> chief engineer of the hype train. Yep, chief, chief, uh, yeah, chief of the hype train. Our practicality train really depends on which train you want to ride today, right? Mm -hmm. We could be the wild car on the practicality train or the quiet car on the hype train. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sarah Bremer, I am sitting in the day longer chair. Uh, I'm Adam Sewell. I'm a professor at University of Rhode Island. I'm sitting in the watch lead chair. My research is interests are in submarine volcanism. I also just found out what trepanning is. <laughs> oh. Is it something you can share with the class or you want to keep it to yourself? <laughs> Remember, little kiddos, kiddos are Yeah. It's uh, in the old days mm. when someone got a boo-boo on their head mm. and there was some pressure built up, they found oh, ways right. to release the pressure. That's right. And once again, I'm Lisa Ball, Science Communication Fellow, and I am a science teacher from Lawrence, Kansas, home of KU Basketball, go Jayhawks. And oh, <laughs> dude, look at that, that pillow. Beautiful. That's a cool spiral. Massive. That's some of the columnar jointing that we've seen and mentioned before, where... Mm. Uh, all the material is, as it cools, it contracts, and to relieve the stress that comes from shrinking, it breaks into a hexagonal pattern, and those little cracks then uh, cool faster than everything else around them, and they propagate down in, leaving those hexagonal columns. Very cool. That is the biggest one I have seen. The cool thing is that. Uh, Columnar jointing, based on the size, will tell you something about how fast it was cooling. So if you see, oh, <laughs> just dropping in. Wait, literally, you wanna is that Chana push in on this guy? Yeah, Might I think be. so. Yeah. Oh, I think Getting he wants to hear the rest of my columnar joint <laughs> monologue. He's all you were saying. Does it have to do with Chana cups? He was saying that the more blue oh, they are, the um, the younger they are. Oh. You want to turn off those lasers for a moment there, Joe? What's amazing is that they're never facing us. <laughs> they're always <laughs> swimming away, which is hard to do. Oh, what a cutie. So cute. Aww. It's the feet. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go Landing off the gears. edge. Yeah. <laughs> He's landing gears. Been out for millennia. Oh, I have 
Uh oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. It's a trap. Yeah, really. Wow. Senja just wrong. <laughs> so, back to corn. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing is if you go up to a, a high mountain area where lava flows ran into glaciers, you'll see teeny tiny columnar joints. Mm. They cooled so fast. Wow. Why is it so common in basalt um, and less common in rhyolite? Damn it, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember where we were, but we saw some really columnar basalts that were like, you know, vertically oriented that looked almost like the cliffs of the place where there are columnar basalts. I can't remember. <laughs> um, I know you're talking about anywhere where there's yeah. flood basalts like Columbia River Gorge or yeah. uh, Devil's Causeway. Yeah. It's like that subsea. It was really. Dwight was the expedition leader. I don't remember which one it was. You have a much better memory of these things than I do, right? So is, yeah. One of the reasons you might not see them in more silicic lava flows is that they're generally much cooler than basaltic lava flows. Mm. But I think you probably do see them in some rhyolitic flows, maybe not as common. You were saying that these events are not really witnessed. It would be really interesting to know that what happens temperature-wise close to the surface and how long, how quickly that heat dissipates and what it does to any life in the area or what the long-term effects are. Yeah, I think it's pretty... It's, uh, it doesn't have a very large effect. You know, and you're flying over a 400 degree C black smoker and mm -hmm. you're like a couple meters off, the temper temperature anomaly gets really small really oh, fast because, yeah. you know, water's got a huge heat capacity. I guess that would be the question is like how much of it, like what's the vol, it, is the volume like a large amount of lava that's happening out once affecting or is it like, you know, pockets of these over tubes. Time, yeah. yeah, the tubes slowly over time. Yeah, there's certainly uh, been observations of what's called mega plumes uh, mm. during an eruption. So huge amount of, of hot fluid, but uh, it's not clear if that's due to cooling of the lava or kind of large exhalation from, from the crust. Mm. Former SCF Kim says she's glad to hear we're keeping the hype train on the tracks. <laughs> hey, Kim. Thanks, thanks hey, Kim. Kim. And she had a question. I guess I'm the only one who's new to Corps of Exploration in the watch about what is the most surprising thing so far about living and working aboard the Nautilus. And that would definitely be kind of how much motion there is on the ship mm -hmm. <laughs> since I've only been on a large cruise ship. But I've done fine with it. It's just not a whole lot of sleeping on the first night. Yeah. But then you just get so tired. It doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> yeah, you'll go home and you'll need the bed to be rocked. To go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we have a viewer who watched a lot of the last expedition, but this is the first time they have tuned in for our leg and would like to know just a quick overview of the science objectives. Yeah, so we're at a uh, series of unnamed seamounts that have never been visited before. Can we zoom on those white small things? Sorry, Adam. Can yeah, no know? worries. Uh, okay. sure. Bottom of the boulder center of the screen. Bottom of the boulder center screen. So uh, our objectives are to... The sea cucumber there? The uh, little white, white little specks? White, yeah, the white specks. Adam is going to assist with the telestrator in a minute. Okay. Um, would you mind telestrating which one? They're up a little bit. Up a oh, little bit. Raj, Raj, Raj. Those two or three. Oh, yeah. gotcha. All right, Dave, go ahead and push on in there, please. So 
that one of your buddies running? Are they just, is that just a tiny hold fast on the bottom right that's, that's broken off? Yeah, I think that's Did a hold fast. Did you say hold fast? Hold <laughs> fast. <laughs> oh, that's like a little tunicate or There's something. There's your buddy. There's that one, yeah, and then the one on the bottom, then we'll pick up and go. That does look like a hold fast, yeah. Yeah, a little stalk broke off. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I please. Um, yeah, so what we're doing here is trying to assess the distribution and diversity of biology that calls the seamounts home, as well as to understand the geologic history. So we want to look at our sample of the rocks, look at their chemistry, and understand if they're related to uh, very old, large igneous events uh, from the Cretaceous or related to the nearby Hawaiian islands. And we're also looking at the iron manganese crust that has formed on these seamounts, uh, trying to understand how the composition of the surrounding seawater influences the enrichment in rare metals that are found uh, in these crusts. If you were asked if fish perhaps consider the ROV a threat or a predator since they seem to always be facing away? Some of them seem to be aware of it and some aren't. That uh, sorceress eel I think we saw the other day seemed to just be happily bobbing yeah. along. Uh, the Tronoclops, I think I got that name right. No, that's the one you wanted it to be? Yeah, Chana it's Chonacops. Chonacops. Um <laughs> Unfortunately, seem to uh, always be swimming away in the vast two examples that I've seen. <laughs> mm -hmm. The ratfish always seem to kind of like come a little towards us and then realize it. Oh. Go ahead and push stage. on in there, please, Dave. Is there a message in it? I hope so. Oh, oh. oh. That looks like an older bottle, right? Yeah, glass. Yeah, it's Old. lovely. This cool little sponge up to the left of it, too. We need an identifier, and then the internet can figure out what it is. Do a little bop down. No message, though, for us. Right, it says something right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. What does it say? I don't know. It says something? It's a, it's a secret message from okay. a pirate long ago. Hear ye. <laughs> Hear ye. Can't this see. hold fast. <laughs> All right, internet, take a screen grab of that. Oh, and tell I us please. where it, what it is. Oh, right there, please, Dave. Need an etching of it. Yeah. No. It's definitely embossed letters. Yeah, Chonacops corollatus. Definitely not what I said on the bottle. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a little too on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> we got a nice video as uh, someone on the science chat just indicated, of the deployment of landing gear, pelvic and pectoral fins. Mm. Aww. <laughs> as you all hop into bed tonight, don't forget to deploy the landing gear. Deploy the landing gear. <laughs> yeah, rocks don't have tiny, cute feet, Adam. Mm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was, he was too quiet. He's, like, he's, like, he's cooking Think. something up back there. <laughs> if you were asked about picking up the bottle, and typically we don't collect the marine debris because of space limitations. Make sure we leave enough room for all the rocks and the biological specimens. 
actually, speaking of space limitations, maybe we should get a little assessment of sure, what the basket yeah. looks like. Um, looks like we got something in every starboard bio box except for D. Um, and forward bio box has multiple things in both compartments. We have one, two, three, four slurps um, and three push cores. Oh. How many more rocks per depth are we meant to collect on we the rest? We are looking at two more. X1 at 2208-ish. So we have a D for that. Has, have they doubled up on the wood in, in box uh, no, B No, they have not. They haven't doubled up on much of the rocks. Yeah. It looks like also the, the big starboard ones are pretty full, the yeah. large ones. You can I always hold, hug something on the front porch as well. <laughs> right. For the last rock. That's a last resort, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say it's a resort. Yeah. <laughs> we need to load up on more weights. Drop. Do we still have a Hello, remaining you know still come plate? Up. We got two plates left two over. Two plates? Yeah. have a viewer who just finished up their first geology class and is really enjoying watching and kind of knowing what they're looking at. So Yay, congrats. Geology. And if you are interested in joining the team someday, check out our website. We do have internship opportunities for college students. We have a couple aboard right now. There's a C pen, I think. Oh, 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 stick in the mud, this one. Yeah. Or is that? I think that's what it is. All right, Dave, go ahead and push it on there, center screen, please. Yep. Wow. C pen. Octa coral. Very cute. How do you know it's octocoral? I believe yeah. that sea pens are octocorals. Oh, okay. And is that anchored in the sediment, or is it mm -hmm. to yeah. the rock below? There is a modified peduncle. Is that no? Yeah. Oh, wait, please. And then the rock pens have a like a base, a little semicircle base that stick on. Oh, hello. Any one of the experts on the chat could totally correct any of that. <laughs> but that was my understanding about C pens. But at least that one is one. There's the big plume like ones. I don't know if those are octocorals. Those are a different kind of C pen. Maybe they are still. They look like a big feather. <laughs> Make up some ground here. Do do. Yeah, it looked like it had the eight, eight tentacles in the polyps. I don't see it in the little guide back here. Steve's asleep, so I can say whatever I want. No threat of the data lab. Voice, <laughs> voice from above, chiming in. Voice from above. Randy, whatever you want, I would say let's keep the ship moving up this slope. Sure. Just keep moving. The 
is coming to the end of this second move. I was just kind of popping them in in the background. Good. I can see it. It's just like the past 60 meters I can't see on Argus. What happened to our hype train, huh? It's <laughs> lost its own steam. Mm. Hype train's at the station. <laughs> There's the other one. Hmm? There's the other one. <laughs> oh dear. have a viewer asking about the distance between the laser dots and that is 10 centimeters and that helps to size things up
So one of the cool things I've gotten to do on this expedition is not only sit on watch, but also to teach classrooms uh, around the world. I taught all science class periods in my high school in the last couple of days. Oh, nice. How was, how was that? It was awesome. How's it, how was it really seeing fun. the familiar faces? Yeah, it was, it was great. I got to ask questions. We showed them all around the ship. What age are they? Um, I teach uh, ninth graders, 11th graders, and 12th graders. But we had multiple science classrooms joining us. We even had a few extra high schools in our district and outside of our district join in. That's really cool. And if you are a teacher or if you have a student, might be interested in booking and interaction, you can find out more information on our website. We're on the last expedition for this season, but the season will start up again in February. I come up a little faster here. Yeah, that'd be good, good. Get ahead a bit. Roger. <clears throat> That's a lot of extra work, is it there, Lisa? The interactions. Oh yeah. Yeah, those interactions. I did three before breakfast yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> they started at four fifteen a.m. Oh. <laughs> I have one tomorrow night at eleven p.m. Mm. in South oh. Korea. Nice. Be exciting. Oh. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be participating in the AGU fall AGU meeting from here. Oh, nice. And wow. one of the sessions is at three thirty a.m. local. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are you presenting or anything? I'm, yeah, I'm presenting on Monday and Friday. Nice. Mm. Cool. We'll set in on that. I actually have to record my presentation, so I thought maybe I would give it to the group. And then oh, yeah. That'd be nice. Record it. And then have somebody play it at 3.30 in the morning? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You get mic'd up. <laughs> Which so session? there's not like ship sounds in the background. <laughs> Let's see. So I'm uh, Allison and I are con helping convene a session about ocean exploration. Nice. And then I'm presenting in a session about advances in uh, what was it <laughs> submarine volcanism session. Okay. Neat. Yeah. Last year and this year, I was not able to. To AGU. It's kind of a bummer. Really look forward to that every year. Yeah. It's just amazing we can do these things from a ship out in the Pacific Ocean. Is it an all virtual event? It is hybrid. So there's an in person meeting in New Orleans this year. Oh. And that was fun a few years back. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I ate at this restaurant that had a pig on the sign out front. What was it called? Uh, some <laughs> Cerdo or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. It was good. <laughs> oh. We went to, did you go to Pesh? Deathbed. Pesh. No, uh, like a, no, I don't. A little think off so. the. Not in the main bit. Like how you guys are reminiscing on these restaurants right now. <laughs> They're thousands of miles away. Yeah. <laughs> conference restaurants. We have a viewer who's wanting to know why we're not seeing a whole lot of uh, life down here. Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, I think that we might see a little more as we get shallower, but uh, also might be the side of the seamount that we're on. Certainly there's a lot more sediment accumulation than we saw in our previous dive, and that could mean that we're kind of in the lee of the prevailing currents, uh, in which case it might be that the other side of the seamount has more life on it, because uh, current most of these what we're seeing are filter feeders, so the current's really important for that. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, one thing that we found about the seamounts, at least on the last cruise, was there seemed to be spatially and temporally varying currents. Mm -hmm. Seems like there was a lot of microclimate as far as that went. Can we zoom in on some of that um, structure down below? Is it all dead sponges creating that? Are you looking at this little ribbon structure here? Yeah. Yeah, sure thing. Oop, too far. Don't want to get that close to it. No, we do not. Yeah. All right there, Dave, you want to push on in a bit? Rock, I think. That's pretty porous, eh? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. That almost looks sponge? like sponge. Yeah. yeah. What? Manganese coated sponge? Is that the old dead sponge? What? <laughs> that I can't imagine this dead sponge would hang out long enough to get manganese on it. Yeah. I don't know. Or is that just really porous? Looks like it goes into the rock though, doesn't it? That's or is well, that yeah. just I don't know if it was in, maybe it was encrusting. Or is it on top? Yeah. Do a little poke? Or are we running out of time? Uh go ahead Jake. Pull out the arm there real quick. Yeah, we're pretty flat, so but oh. but still be quick about it. I don't know. Yeah look there's definitely rock that it's on. Yeah. It could be sponge. That is wicked if it is. Where you at? There you go. The one right at the at the bottom of the screen, there's like the rounded rock and then there's this ridge yeah. thing on top. Go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Yeah, go ahead and give a poke down there and then it'll poke it'll poke up there too. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, so cool. Oh, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it does look like that is spongy, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. Why is it black? Do you think that's... Poke down, down here? Yeah, do it. Adam is excited about that poke. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's that is wow. total sponge. sponge. Yeah. Do you, you guys want a piece of it? No. <laughs> oh. No space. Oh, Raj. Okay. There's look. There's some live sponge there to the left. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think yep. that that is the same. It looks like it could be the same. That leafy like this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen live ones of those before. Oh, so it's like a dead encrusting sponge, bro. Yeah, is it's it like, like this the one like that's like dome, like amphitheater shaped. I don't know. I was just okay. thinking about it's like ridge like and has these like. Very flappy. Yeah, this is oh, all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's all. That's so cool. Wow. We're going to go here pretty soon, guys. You sure you don't want to sample this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's probably going to just crumble into nothingness. Yeah. That's true. All right. Full Wait. wide, please. I would, I would so just cool. guess that that's the same. That little bit was the same as this type. So we're thinking encrusted, manganese encrusted sponge? Best guess. As of right now, wow. I don't know. I mean, yeah, sure. If it, if it's super thin coating of manganese, but yeah. and relatively recent, if it's millimeter still per friable. million years, wow. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy. Sponges just got a lot older. <laughs> I oh, yeah. play a lot of catch up here, but that was really cool.